The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, Bunny. Yes. This week on Diet Pope on Film, we are continuing our month-long movement that we are calling the November Palette Cleanser. It's an entire month of well-known popular films designed to counter the massively archaic films we saw last month for Bunnoween. Yes. No offense. No offense, of course, to both Bunny Williams and no offense to Snap Killers with Down Syndrome. Yes. So this week we are watching a big budget Hollywood summer movie. One based on a classic beloved series of books. I am, of course, talking about Stephen King's beloved book series, The Chronicles of Narnia. Yes. Yes. In this series of books, there's a young boy who may or may not be the chosen one, and he, he needs to fight against an evil bad guy with the help of a gruff, uh, scruffy, but kind-hearted bandit. Gee, that is such an original idea! <laughs> That you've never seen anywhere else before. That's why I think it works so much. Mm -hmm. So this week, we uh, may or may not be having a whole lot of fun complaining about the expensive letdown known as 2007. 2007. How expensive could it be? I really, uh, I really want to know the budget on this one. $60 million. $60 million. Well, that's not terribly a huge budget. That's uh, that's kind of a Kevin yeah. Smith budget, actually. Well, that might be one of the reasons why. So anyway, oh god, the yeah, they spent like no fucking money on this. So before we we get into it, a quick question for you: Which did you like more, uh, the Dark Tower or the Mummy? Oh. I feel like both of them are are like cousins in that they're both soulless, big budget Hollywood monstrosities. Yeah. So they're like related in a way. But if I got to go with like better, I got to go with the mummy. Yeah, because at least the mummy had uh, uh, Tom Cruise being shot at, and that's always fun. It was a, co so a it was a coherent <laughs> plot line. Yes, it was really. a bad plot line, but it, it was but a it coherent was plot line. Yeah. I mean, I mean, after about a half hour, 45 minutes, I looked at Jeannie and I was like, do you, do you understand anything that's going on in this movie? Cause I barely do. And I read all the books. Yeah. Yeah. And the ancillary so, books. Yeah. Yeah. Like the side books and all that. Yeah. So, The Dark Tower, Stephen King, Sony, Sony, and Columbia Pictures, this is, or was, or is, still, supposed to be a, a tent pole. This was part one of a multi-part series. It was going to be a series of movies, and a TV series, and yada, yada, yada. But The Dark Tower opened to bad reviews and a very lackluster box office, so the future of The Dark Tower is in question. And, uh, here's an interesting part. Rightfully so, because this movie is crap. Mm -hmm. See, the it's, Dark Tower—it's it's it, incredible crap. Yeah, the Dark Tower is an epic eight-book fantasy adventure series from author Stephen King. He calls the series his magnum opus. Eight books, four thousand two hundred and fifty pages, not including the 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 side books, the prequels, mm -hmm. the novellas, the comic books. This. Series has a loyal fan base, but what yeah. the fuck is well, this movie, though? Because they, what because, is this movie? Oh, they, they took bits from everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. I, I don't it's see like how anybody can understand this. Together. Yeah, it's you like know? an amalgam of a bunch of different books in the series smooshed together into an hour and a half of cliches. So, for someone who's never read the series, none of this makes any sense. Mm hmm. And once again, this brings me to Ender's Game. Yes. There was so much of a, a, of a hype over uh, them finally making a, a movie based on the beloved sci-fi book Ender's Game. And everyone was excited. And, oh, there's Harrison Ford. And, oh, my God, this is going to be huge and big budget and special effects and yada, yada, yada. And the, like, like most of the reviews that I read said, 
it, it, if you have not read the book, Andrew's Game, you will have no idea what the fuck is going on. And that is mm-hmm. a sad review because you should be able to understand the Dark Tower movie without having to read eight books and 4,250 pages. Yeah. But I just don't think that's possible. And so and, this, and the, this, and the and side this, books because Insomnia is... Um, uh, uh, a tie-in book to the Dark Tower. Hearts of Atlantis is a tie-in to the Dark Tower. Um, the Black House was and a tie-in in to just, the Dark Tower. And doesn't this kid, a uh, troubled teen, is what I called him, doesn't troubled teen, doesn't he just have The Shining? Y- yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, they keep calling it. Oh, he's he's got the shine. Oh, he's a pure shine. Like oh, so he, so so this is also the shining. Yeah, where where he he really didn't in the books, as far as I recall. Um, yeah. he might have had he might have had a little something. They had mentioned the shining like once in passing. Yeah, you know, like it wasn't like like they really harped on it in this movie. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like crazy. Yeah. The thing, the thing that amazes me the most about this movie is, uh, Eleanor, you can't have Clorox disinfecting wipes. Why would you even want Clorox disinfecting wipes? You're 16 months old. What are you trying to do? With, I know you miss Mama. I miss Mama too. But Clorox disinfecting wipes isn't going to make her appear any quicker. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> okay? Mama. Yeah, okay. Now, you know what? You're really bumming me out, baby. Mama. I don't know. Maybe Bella knows. Go ask her. Go ask her. Go ask her what happened. Oh, you're just going to sit on the floor. Okay. The thing that amazes me the most about the Dark Tower is how they got the Dark Tower series, which is supposed to be this unique and original series with amazing characterizations and and all this attention to detail and and this big epic story. And they just turned it into generic Hollywood bullshit. Oh, my God. Yes. There's nothing original about this freaking movie. So and they the and they never they never bring you into this world. Yeah, no, no, no. You know, you, you, watching this is closer to watching the Begotten. Like, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah, you know. Yeah. Where are so, you? Where, you know. No, that is mommy's. You can't open that. You can't open that. That is mommy's. So throughout the years, numerous people have tried to turn this series of books into a something. Yeah. Uh, J.J. Abrams, Ron Howard, and what I would have wanted to see, Tommy Wiseau. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, I am the gunslinger. It couldn't be worse. Oh, hello, Man in Black. (laughs) You are my favorite bad guy. Come and get me, man in black. You're just a chicken. Cheep, 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 cheep. <laughs> so, so a, a bunch of different people tried to make it into something, and so it had a bunch of different versions. It was going to be a, a seven-series film franchise. Then they yeah. were going to make it into a trilogy. Then they were going to make it into a TV miniseries. Then they were going to make it into a cable TV miniseries. Then there was even talks of a Netflix series. So a lot of work went to finally turning this into a series, which is why it's so weird that they spent so much time working on it. And then the movie ends up just being a 95 minute film that seemed to be in a hurry to get itself over with. Yes, that is perfect. Yes. Yeah. Like so much time and effort went into making this film. And then it's like, you're just rushing into everything. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, you can't take your time with this. Yeah. There was part of me that, that watched this film, and throughout the entire thing, I was just thinking, okay, well, if this was an FX series, yeah. <laughs> I bet mm-hmm. this would have been great. Or series. HBO, but not. Yeah. 
series yeah, would be the best for this, you know? Yeah. They've yeah, already no, no. got like they've got at least five years of good material. Yeah. It's 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 weird that we need to get this big epic uh uh series of fantasy books and turn it into a PG thirteen summer blockbuster for the family. Yeah. So the film opened to just nineteen point five million dollars, and that's like a laughable opening weekend box it's... office. And, yeah, and yet, how much of that was was Matthew McConaughey's salary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's an excellent question. I mean, uh, Idris Elba. I bet you we can get him for five hundred grand. Yeah, you know, five hundred grand and a possibility of a, of a franchise of his own. You know, yeah. that would be a good deal. Um, yeah. So where and the fuck yet, did all this money go? I don't, know. I don't know. And yet, despite the bad reviews and the lackluster box office, apparently they still say they're going through with the sequels and the TV show and whatnot, although I don't know if they're actually going to do it or why. Oh, please don't. Oh, man, yeah. no. You've, you've raped it enough for now. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that I find interesting about this series is, and at this point I have to stop and say spoiler alert or whatever, but um, like decades old spoiler alert, but the book series ends with uh, the gunslinger going back to the beginning of the series and he's just caught in this like time loop. Yeah. Because he doesn't have like the, I don't know, the horn of MacGuffin yes. that he needs to defeat everybody so he's forced to just live this over and over and over again mm -hmm. but in this movie series apparently he does have this horn so in a way technically this movie series is a sequel to the books yes and i've heard it pitched that way as well yeah but, but that is, it, it, it's not a sequel of anything. <laughs> it's, it's chopped up bits of stuff. It's succotash. Okay. It's peas and corn. So I'm not going to give you one right now because Eleanor's right here. And if she sees me give one to you, then she's going to freak out and she's going to want some. Okay. Here, you want this comb, Eleanor? Go for it. Eleanor's literally been right here next to me this entire time. She's actually doing pretty good right now. Oh, good. But yes, this this is uh, Succotash. She's waving at you right now. You hi. can't see. But she's waving at you. Yeah, oh, it was... Yeah. Let me say hi. It, it, it was just parts of so many different things, and, and they're not connecting, you know? <laughs> Eleanor, Ele okay, you want to see Bunny? You want to see Bunny? There's Bunny. You see Bunny? Say hi, Bunny. Hi. Say hi. Yeah. Oh, you want you, Okay. I, I got it. I got it. It's okay. It's okay. I know. Mommy's not here. You're very confused. Here, have a hair tie. You don't want it. Okay. Then give it back to me because it's actually emeralds. You can't have, you can't have the podcast. You are only acting up because I said you were doing good, and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> so let's discuss the plot of uh, the film The Dark Tower. This yeah. should be easy. It won't take long. No! The film... No! Uh, Eleanor, you're fine. Here, let me hold you. You can't have Clorox disinfecting wipes. I don't know why you want Clorox disinfecting wipes. <laughs> You're 16 months old. You don't need Clorox disinfecting wipes, baby. The well, film put her, put her in the bathroom and maybe she'll clean it. That's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. I'll have to... The film opens in the bland, gritty world of every teen fantasy novel. Mm -hmm. Where Matthew McConaughey is doing sci-fi shit. Yeah. Cut to a troubled New York teen in an earthquake. He draws images of his dreams. He dreams of images of towers and uh, people and numbers and yada, yada, yada. Uh -huh. 
he gets into a fight at school and he goes to see his therapist who thinks he's Cray and this is all a manifestation of his dead dad. Yeah. So then a uh, creepy homeless guy gives him a prophecy. His parents want to send him to a nut house and they should because he's obviously crazy. You can't have my podcast notes. You just want what you can't have. That means you're human, okay? <laughs> None of us ever get what we want and it's beautiful. So the kid goes to sleep, he has visions, yada, yada, yada. So the people from the loony bin come to take him away, uh, but one might be an evil shapeshifter or whatever. So he runs away and he finds an old house with a portal from Rick and Morty. Right. And he tries to go through, but the house is alive for some reason that I don't understand. Yeah. All I know is that none of this happened in the first book. I read the first book. And none of this is in there. There's no little kid in present day. Don't you can't write on my face. You can't get a pen and write on your dad's face. No parent would allow that. The the talisman is part of this too. Really? Yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. this freaking series. See, and that's that's where like like here's where I say even I'm I'm confused, okay? Because we have the scene where he is with the state farm guy yeah okay and i'm looking at that and i'm like okay that's parkas from the black house mm. okay because there was a scene in the black house where parkas met and talked with roland okay because when they go into that alternate world that's roland's world okay okay uh <laughs> Eye of the Dragon. That's yeah. it, too. Yeah. But then you later on, then later on, he addresses him as father, and I'm like, you know, motherfucker, you know, like, like, you're gonna mix shit this much, and you're gonna take the scene from Parkas, call it his dad, so you don't have to build a Western Kingdom set, which <laughs> I really wanted to see the Western, the Western Kingdom set. Yeah. Because that's that's Roland's people. They are all knights, and they're gunslingers. Yeah. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. The State Farm guy. The yeah. No, I know. Okay. Yeah. He yeah. was also the president in the first season of Twenty Four. Twenty Four. Yeah. 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 So the kid goes through the portal, and now he's in Midworld, which looks empty and barren and sparse. So now he's in Tucson, Arizona. He's in downtown Tucson, Arizona. Yes. So the troubled team meets the gunslinger. He's gruff and angry and, and uh, threatening. No way he could ever open up to a young kid like this. Mm -hmm. Um. Turns out that troubled teen is literally, he literally has the shining, which causes visions. And as far as I can tell, Matthew McConaughey, uh, is stealing children to use their uh, shining powers, their shining, to try and destroy the tower at the center of all known universes, I think. Yes. It's difficult to tell. So they go and find a seer or whatever. So they're going through the woods and they fight. They fight a few Cronenbergs. Mm -hmm. See now, okay. So, yes, those kids you know are. what they are. I'm just, I'm just, they're Cronenbergs. <laughs> Those kids are breakers, and what they're doing is they're breaking the beams that lead to the Dark Tower, which is the nexus of the universe. Gotcha. So that's why he drew that wheel thing in the sand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. Because <laughs> each that. of the beams lead to the Dark Tower. Okay. So they're using the kid's psychic abilities to break the spokes of the wheel, basically. Uh, okay, hold on, uh, Bunny. Yes, Maxwell, what do you want to tell me? What, what, what are you saying? You made something? Okay, then show it to me. Okay, you didn't want to say something. You wanted to ask me a question. Those are two different things. Meanwhile, Matthew McConaughey shows up in our world, Midgard, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Yeah. Kills 
uh, troubled teen's parents while troubled teen is being read by the Oracle, who's like, hey, have a cookie. You're the child. You're not the chosen one. The Matrix. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. I keep getting distracted because the troubled teen in the middle of this entire film. Oh, yeah, no, you showed that to me, Maxwell. You showed that to me yesterday. I was quite impressed. I cried. <laughs> the The troubled teen in the middle of this film looks exactly like the troubled teen from the show Weeds. Okay. So I kept getting distracted thinking that this kid was going to kill a Mexican drug lord or something. Oh, <laughs> he, he looks... He looks exactly like the kid from Weeds. It's weird. So the gunslinger and uh, and the troubled teen realize, oh, duh, Matthew McConaughey must have a base on normal Earth. So yeah. they set up a portal and they monologue a bunch. You can't have my clipboard. You cannot have my clipboard. This is my clipboard. It is mine. I'm sorry. What else do you want? You want one of these? Here, have that. No more, though. Well, you. Matthew McConaughey is is Randall Flagg from The Stand. Okay, it, that's what it seemed like when that's, they went to the base. That it, and it's like, okay, so this is The Stand because that's what this looks like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, um. So that makes sense. And, and there was there were even places that had had died off of captain trips in the war in the other world and stuff like that and and matthew mcconaughey played it way too stiff yeah you know the he was he was kind of a joker you know he yeah. was a lot more casual he wasn't worried about losing and trying to stop rolling from anything yeah he was just doing his thing yeah okay so they're trying to set up the portal so that they can go to Midgard or whatever, and then faceless monsters attack, but the gunslinger shoots them, they go to regular New York City, then they go to a hospital, and wacky things occur. Yes. Hey, uh -huh. now the gunslinger's in regular Earth, and wackiness ensues. <laughs> so... The troubled teen finds his parents dead. There's drama. Matthew McCon then Matthew McConaughey arrives at the gun store, and the troubled teen gets kidnapped and gets taken to a, what I can assume is the place where the Foot Clan was from the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Mm -hmm. It looked eerily similar. In fact, I'm surprised there were no teens skateboarding. Yeah, <laughs> and the kid gets the kid gets strapped to the MacGuffin machine. Yeah. And the rest of the film plays out like a million boring, uneventful action films. Yeah. Like there's no originality throughout the rest of the film at all. The good guy is fighting an army of bad guys, including the bad guy's second in command. And there's a doomsday machine. It's all just so freaking cliche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So freaking cliche. Like. Like a. Our discussion, I'm, I'm, I'm like at the end of the movie. Now. That's the end of the movie. Uh huh. So I've done is, this in the film. That is the end of the movie. All of the characters were like so cookie cutter. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That th there yeah. was no real character development at all on any. Roland's the gunslinger. So fucking what? You know. Yeah. Why is that so terribly important? Why are these people impressed by that? Yeah. You know, they they didn't give enough backstory. You know, and they didn't yeah, they, they didn't show us very much that was cool. Yeah. No, nope, not a lot. Not a lot. I I shouldn't have gotten to the end of the film that quickly. But mm -hmm. it did. Yeah. So that so so that's all I got this week. The movie sucks. I I don't know if sequels and a TV show are going to help it, but I I, no. I doubt that that's happening. That is this week's. That is all I've got for this week's episode of the Pope on Film, as evident by the fact that the baby is screaming and knocking on the door that Bella apparently closed. So oh, but quickly, we should the, mention how we killed the Dark Universe. No, I'm saving that for next week. Okay. I'm saving it for next week. Okay. Next week we've got a good 
a good episode. We're going to say goodbye to the Dark Universe. We're going to be talking about uh, some problems I have with Hulu. We're going to be talking about the Church of Chili's. And we are also uh, continuing our November palate cleanser by discussing, by watching our, our movie next week, Thor Ragnarok. Okay. Check the cough cough. It's it's not one hundred. It, it, it's not the best, but it's yeah. good. For, it is what it is. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> next week we're discussing Thor Ragnarok. Uh, what I honestly sincerely believe to be a, a just the brother of what we do in the shadows, which is another movie that we've done, which is wonderful and everyone should see it. Yes. Uh, cool. Yeah, so very excited about next week. We're going to be talking about Thor and Chili's and Hulu and the dark universe. And it's going to be a, a full length episode. We've got some big things happening with notes from the bookstore. And it just next week's going to be a big fat normal episode and we hope that you listen in but now that we're here at the end of diet pope on film all the taste with half the calories <laughs> i've got to say i think that that uh despite the fact that it was a bit of a shorter rooney little episode there i think that this has been a good episode i think this has been a good episode good i'm glad you agree with me that means a lot you mean a lot to me bunny our, our little episode is still a long podcast. Yep. Yep. <laughs> most, Even the short one is still a long one. Most podcasts run an hour. Yeah. Some of the bigger ones, they'll, they'll go two hours. We're yeah. right in between there. <laughs> yeah. And this is a short episode. For yes. Us. It's amazing. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And cut and print.